I'm just giving you a warning. I'm going to start and I mess up a lot. Um, understanding or oh, Jesus video on, um, fuck. <laughs> this fuck me. Oh, I'm really jumbling my words here. Ability. <laughs> That's the thing. It takes me a minute, but once I flow, oh, fucking fuck. <laughs> so I'm going to repeat myself a shit ton. What's up guys, uh, my name's Ty and today we're going to be looking into cards from set 1.0 and 1.5 that I think are going to be uh, pretty good in uh, BT4. That was good. This is what I do when <laughs> I'm doing this. I'm like, yeah, that was a good one. Next. So with the new set coming out, there's a heavy reliance on digibursting, which is a new effect of where you trash one uh, a specific number of the digi evolution sources underneath to activate an effect. And uh, I believe that these cards are going to help counter a lot of those type of decks. And um, I'll explain why. So the first card I want to talk about is Gabumon from the blue starter deck. Um, so it's inheritable is uh, trash the Digi Evolution card at the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon with a uh, level of five or less. So I think this card's going to actually be really useful in the set because all the Digibursting usually... Uh, most people are saving them for their level sixes so uh, being able to attack fast um, you'll be able to make it so they can't use it if that makes sense uh, I'll give an example um, with this guy here uh, Nidhogmon um, he's Digiburst 4 which means he has to be from a level 2 to a level 6 if you stop him at any point on that way to that they can't activate this effect and his effects pretty uh, ridiculous so doing that is going to kind of halt people's play or it's going to have to make them play a different way so when you use cards like gabumon and also um gurumon which they have the pretty much the same effect but the only difference is gurumon um it's just trash the bottom of one it doesn't have a level specific but it is a level four instead of a level three so i guess whatever opening you would have in your deck you use one of those two or both it's up to you but um the idea is, if you use them against green, especially green, um, they're going to have to play a certain way against you, so they're going to have to keep things in their raising area. So if you're attacking, they're going to have to stop you at some point by putting up blockers of some sort to stop your attack. So then they have to focus less on digivolving into their big guy to bring up the swing for game prime example where i think these two cards are going to really benefit is with an imperial Dramon blue deck um, because imperial Dramon um, attacks a lot in the same turn both of these cards don't have the wording of once per turn so if you attack three times in one turn you'll affect this three times so you can in turn if you have the gabumon you can pretty much make it to where they're just the level five or if you have a gurumon you can print yeah same same deal you can take out all their digi uh, evolution sources so then they can't use the digi burst effect on at all which is pretty much that's the main buff or the main bonus of what bt4 offers so if you take that away then i just think it's going to be able you're going to be able to control the game a lot better another card i think is going to work really well is a uh, death parade blaster yeah what a what a name but um it's it's effect is trash up the two divi digi evolution cards from the bottom of all your digimon or your opponent's digimon then if you have a green digimon in play suspend one of your opponent's digimon with no digi evolution sources i don't really believe that the second part of this um card is going to actually really play into effect unless you're playing like a rookie rush but um like a blue green rookie rush but but being uh a three cost option card and having the security effect being it just activating i think this card can be um, pretty useful when it comes into a blue deck or possibly even like a mega zoo that uses the blue um blue babies same with um howling howling crusher uh this one's a little steep in price it's a seven cost but it trashes everything on all your opponent's digimon so I don't know if this one's going to be useful. It could be in situations, but I think the Death Parade Blaster does it a little better. But um, and it's a lot cheaper, so there's that. But you know, it's up to you. But either one of those two, they kind of do the same effect, uh, and they both activate in security. So I mean, I guess if, for an option card, 
that's what you'd want last card i want to talk about that will um i think be probably a staple in blue and yellow decks coming into the new set is shakuman um if you watch my last video you know i kind of shit on this card i, I was not a fan of it because it, it just wasn't it's good against rookie rush in the current meta but with the new set coming out this card is going to be pretty useful because now level sixes are going to have no digi evolution cards so his main effect will activate making them all your opponent with no digi evolution cards gain security minus one so pretty much they can't hit you in security so for them to actually do damage to you or your security they have to have security plus one right off the bat or they have to have a level seven in their hand to evolve over their level six so this card is going to be really useful after they use their effects so it's one of those you kind of want to keep in your hand and after they use their main effect play them then because if you play them too early some of the new cards their effects can pretty much take out anything so um it's a good idea to keep it in maybe just in your hand and then bring it out right when they do their big attack that'd be my advice for that card but that's what i think i think it's going to be really useful because that effect used to only be good on rookie rush but now it's going to be good on almost any deck so i think it's a good one of or two of in every deck if you're playing blue or yellow but uh, if you're playing any other color i wouldn't put this card in because you know the eight play cost isn't ideal but it's not terrible but you know there's probably cheaper options to handle situations but all right so last thing i wanted to touch base on or talk about is um showing you uh kind of an updated imperial jamon blue deck list for the new bt4 um pretty much standard always going to probably stay this way is the with the babies we're going to go with one upamon and four demi vimon pretty self-explanatory why you would use these uh, demi vimon gives you a draw card with uh, a digimon with jamming and then this one uh, upamon lets you draw a card with uh, no digi evolution sources if your opponent at least has one so they're just good babies if you're running blue you're running them it's kind of just the way it is um the next thing uh, a little different from my last one is I run three Lekmon and three uh, Gomamon. Uh, they're just the two drop vanillas. Um, instead of running eight, I'm going to be running six um, because uh, I added in the Gabumon I was talking about with uh, trashing the Digi Evolution sources. I think it's just going to be a good addition. It's going to really help with the new format. Uh, this Gabumon, because you just draw a card, either evolving it or playing it, so it's just good. And then if you're running blue, you're running the Vmon. He's just the best rookie in the game. He still is. Probably always will be. But for the meantime, I think he's the best. Now moving on uh, to level fours. Uh, pretty much staying the same, but uh, one addition, uh, Lobomon. He is a new card. He's from BT4, but you're only going to run one of them. So uh, getting him should be relatively easy if just purchase him right off like TCG player. He's an uncommon so he's not gonna he's not gonna be like through the moon ex expensive. He might be two to five dollars at the most. That would be my guess. It says here he's priced at five dollars but this is pre-release prices so it will only go down. His effect is you can did you evolve him over a tamer and then attack that turn with him. So he's a good game ender. You pretty much want to keep him in your hand until you're ready to win game. You know, you swing, you, you can't swing anymore. He has no security. You play that. It's hard to counter because you can't get rid of Tamers. So he's just a good card to have. So the rest of the level fours, we're running two Frigimon, which did that last time. We're running four Gorilla, which is good. And then we're running uh, three of the XVmon. Um, I decided to take out one of the XVmon for the Lobomon uh, because they both kind of have the same reason why you want them in the deck they can win you the game they can end the game and um having the one evolve gorilla mon i think is pretty useful because it helps cycle if you really need to get a card so having four of him i think is necessary um but if you really wanted to you could get rid of two of the grizzly mon which is your blockers um and and then do four v mon and two lobo mon and you should be pretty good with those ratios um most of the time with this deck, you're not really using your blockers. So they're kind of just there. 
So if you really wanted to, you could switch that. And um, I think it would work just as well. Last, uh, you're playing Imperial Dramon. You're going to play for the Pi Pile Dramon, which is the jammer with the inheritable. Uh, making it so you can attack technically three turn three times in one turn if they gave you at least three memory um and then the dino b he's a piercing jamming same same deal just without the inheritable uh reason you play these guys is because imperial dramon's effect is uh it lowers his digi evolution cost if you evolve him over one of those two so that's why you run them and they just work really well with imperial dramon so good synergy um the last of the level fives is i'm i put back shakamon uh i think it's just going to be really good because before he was the tech card against rookie rush now he's the tech card against almost every deck i think it's a great card i think it's just, it's going to be super useful especially after they do a big pull and just kind of take out everything if they don't finish you off that turn you're able to play and then um halt them for a time being all right so moving on to the level sixes you're playing imperial jermon so you're gonna run imperial jermon four of him uh it's the one with the jamming and when you did evolve into him you can unsuspend all jammers include that includes himself so um yeah he, he just it's a really aggressive deck you're gonna be swinging a lot so um that's why i really think that the gabumon is gonna work super well with this deck because he doesn't have the once per turn so wording so that means you attack with him if you're if gabumon is underneath the imperial Dramon and you attack three times you'll pretty much take out all their digi evolution sources from it doesn't have to be the same one every time you could do it to all of them just so then they can't use digi burst effects on you later in the turn so and um I think that works really well because when you play like that they're gonna have to play a different way against you and if you're super aggressive they have to be defensive so if they're defensive they're not going to be able to get those aggressive attacks on you so i guess a good defense is a strong offense what's the wording what is that so next level six is we're going to be running two of the puppet mon puppet mon's effect on play suspend one of your did uh opponent's digimon and all other uh digimon that are suspended can't unsuspend so pretty much just f can freeze a whole board if you play it right but if you play it wrong you just give your opponent 10 memory and um you know you could lose really easily if you do it wrong so he's one of those you kind of keep it in your hand he's a last resort defense move that's why it's kind of like he's the better defense for this deck than a grizzly mon because he can stop way more but yeah he costs more but yeah that's the idea last um is we're going to talk about the option cards and the tamers if you're running blue or you're playing blue you're going to play four of uh hammer spark it's just zero to play gain a memory insecure to gain two memories that can either stop someone from attacking you and ending your opponent's turn or just giving you more memory to really manage how you how much you want to give your opponent it's just a good card it's just, it's just great uh next we're going to do positron laser so with positron laser uh what you're going to do is it just makes it so two your opponent's digimon can attack um and if w you have a blue digimon on the field also yeah it makes them bounce one of their um suspended digimon back to their hand so it can clear a board kind of and but usually that doesn't happen as much as you think so way to explain it is for me it's only happened a handful of times but using it so i can make it they can't attack or block until their next turn super helpful especially against big black blocker decks it really just helps you able to swing over them fast so if you play it right you got to finish the game pretty much but and if it's in security it does kind of the same thing little not as powerful but you know it does what it needs to do last is we're playing three of the davis uh, memory tamer uh on play look at the top three cards take a blue at a green put it in your hand rest go to the bottom it's just a good searcher and some memory tamer and it works really well with the lobamon because once it's on play you know your lobamon's ready to evolve at any point it's good to run three of it i uh, I felt this deck really relies on getting your memory tamer and you want to see it but if you play it at four I've noticed you see it too much 
and then it kind of just sits in your hand because once you have one you really only play it again if you really need to search for something so it's not like anyone can remove a tamer so at this point in time running three i think is the perfect number but if we look at our overall stats and what we're playing uh, we run five level twos uh, we run 14 of the level threes uh, we're going to run 12 of the level fours nine of the level fives and six of the level six um no level sevens uh, before before i would say instead of running the shakumon put in an omnimon um and which omnimon's great it's a great removal card um, you could still try to find a place to put it in this deck um, maybe removing one of your blockers put it in um but it's not extremely necessary i'm running this list because these are the cards i have and this is what i could possibly make uh, i could make it um putting an omnimon in instead of the shakumon it might be useful then but i think with what i have this is a good this is a good list for the new upcoming bt4 so that's it for the video uh if you enjoyed the video give it a like uh if you have any questions comment down below it's good to bounce ideas off each other and uh i really like trying to help people with this game because i love this game and um subscribe uh for more if you want to see more digimon content it's pretty much what i'm going to be doing from now on so uh yeah give a subscribe if you're into this stuff all right catch you guys all in the next one peace